Welcome back to XL Energy Center here in St. Paul, Minnesota. The festivities are over, and we're just about ready for the opening face-off between the Minnesota Wild and the Los Angeles Kings. Of course, uh, the Wild with the new realignment, part of the new look Central Division, the LA Kings in the Pacific. And the uh, top line of Koibu, Parisi, and Pominville will start for the Wild. Uh, against the top line of Kopitar, William, and for now, number 74, there you see Dwight King starting on the left side, not Dustin Brown, who will start off at least tonight on the third line for Darrell Sutter as the puck is rolled in on Jonathan Quick. Hands it off for Drew Dowdy, back hands it up the far side, and King, puck in his skates, couldn't control it, dumped back behind the L.A. net. Now Regeer, getting it back from Williams. Touch pass there, and it's Williams now into the offensive zone. Looks across with a shot to put it up on the netting and out of play. As we take a look at the starting goalies brought to you by Honda, and both of these goaltenders, for different reasons, kind of looking for bounce back years. Quick looking to bounce back from a subpar regular season by his standards, the standards he set two years ago when he won the cup of the Con Smythe. Nicholas Backstrom hoping to bounce back from offseason surgery as a result of that injury we showed you in the open that happened during the warm ups. Yeah, Dave, you and I were here for that game when Backstrom got hurt. Boy, the, the change in the atmosphere immediately yeah. here in Minnesota was remarkable. And you just knew that the odds of winning some games were getting that much better. We have an icing call here. But the Minnesota Wild, uh, like a lot of teams under Mike Yo, have made some changes. They've got some new forwards up front. I asked them this morning, I said, do you feel better about your team this year? He said, yes, this is the best. My third year here, this is the best I've felt about my team coming in here. And, of course, like every coach this year, so glad that they've had a full training camp and get a chance to work their systems. Carter wins the draw, and Green will shot the backstrom sees all the way and hangs onto it there. As I mentioned, Daryl Sutter talking to us this morning, Brian, he said, last year we had five days of training camp. Some guys needed three. Some guys needed 25. He said, this year we have the full training camp. And he said, our guys are just ready to go. Yeah, Daryl's in fine form again as usual, but the continuity of his team is a big advantage for him. Carter's shot is easily kicked aside by Baxter. Carter trying to get it to the front again. It's Carter and Richards, the familiar tandem, and it's Matt Pratt, the newly acquired left winger on this line, right-hand shooter number 21. Yeah, he's got to make some adjustments playing that. In front, look at this in the net. Brodziak sent it across, Brian. I'm not sure what this hit. An innocent enough shot off the stick of Brodziak, but it gets by quick. And the Wild with a one nothing lead. I think that shot just went straight in. I'm not sure either from my vantage point. I couldn't see Matt Cook was on the far corner. But it seemed to stun Jonathan Quick. He wasn't ready for it. It'll go over to the right side of your screen. Cook will go to the left post. But here's Brodziak. He just throwing it out in front. Yes, I think that does go off of Cook. Cook circled up from behind the net. Nobody had a look at him there. Oh, yeah. He turned his foot. They're going to review this one. Is it a deliberate cooking motion? I don't think so. But you can see the reaction there of Jonathan Quick. Quick was looking, did he boot that one in or not? I think he just turned his foot and turned his leg. It did not look like a deliberate kicking motion to me. But they haven't dropped the puck yet as they are reviewing it here and they oh, are going yeah. to wait. That, that's, he, that, that does not look good from that angle. He, Cook was playing possum. He came out from behind the net. The Kings did not allow for him. We've seen some of those in the past where a player changes the angle of his skate and deflects it in. It's a deliberate kicking motion. Yeah, that one, that one does look a lot more damaging than the first look. This is going to be a tough call. They're taking a long time on this one, too, because it is that fine line. Kicked in. It yep. was kicked in. Yeah, Brad Watson made the announcement. No goal. The puck was kicked in. Brad Watson and Francis Sharon are the uh, referees here tonight. I think there was just a little bit of a hint there of his foot moving forward. We've seen pucks get deflected where a player just changes the angle of his skate and has it go in a glancing blow off the skate and have it count. Cook made a smart play and it was a really heads up play by Brodziak. Brodziak was way in the corner and just threw it to the front of the net. The Kings just not very aware. You can see Matt Green, number two, that had just cleared the area. He was with Matt Cook in behind the net but left him behind him. And fortunately for the Kings, it's not going to matter. Matt Cook signed as a free agent on July the 5th, uh, just a couple of days after the free agency period began. 
<laughs> I would just, yeah, yeah, that expression kind of says it all. I would just look at him, Matt. He was going, mm, yeah. well, yeah. They got me. Yeah, exactly. He's going to do a good job. He's got, he's got a lot of experience that they are playing tough hockey that they need. After video review, the puck goes off his skate, but no kicking motion. Therefore, we have a good goal. Wow. You know, I heard the other referee make an announcement, Brian. I thought they had already called it no goal. Brad Watson opened his microphone. Maybe he was just telling the crowd what the review was about. But Matt Cook it must is going to been, get credit yeah. for the goal. It is. That is a very fine line, as we said. They counted it. And a big hit draws the response from the crowd. That was Hoyle, the 21-year-old with a big hit. And here he is through center ice now with Niederreiter. Tries to throw it to the middle. Now Niederreiter got it back, but it's bounced away and out to center ice. Will they deem that not to be a distinct kicking motion? Scoring for Minnesota! Well, Dave, for me, that was that was a really tough call because it was a little bit of a, a movement forward. I thought they were not going to allow it because they clamped down on those so much. But one nothing Minnesota, that's all that matters right now. The Kyle Brandlin, number 64, playing on that line with Cook and Brodziak. Getting an assist. Rory Mitchell now starting it back for Minnesota. Back by Clifford. And Suter. Plays it ahead now for Fontaine, number 14. Another one of the uh, youngsters getting a chance to prove he belongs in the NHL after a couple of seasons in Houston in the American Hockey League. Played four years at Minnesota Duluth. And now Kopitar with his kink team down one to nothing. Kopitar with a shot that's blocked wide. Now Koivu, chopping at King, knocking the stick out of his hand. No call coming as it's out to center right. Candela plays it ahead now, deflected off the stick of Parisi and into the L.A. zone. Williams drops it back for Dowdy. Around for King, he is turned back by Scandella. The aggressive forecheck here by the Minnesota Wild. Getting up early on the scoreboard is a big advantage for them. Pressure on the team. It's their opening night. They have never lost the game on opening night here in this building. Quick hand with the long shot. He gave up a rebound, but now it's Richards that gets to it. Starts it back for Carter. Now on the right wing side, here is Bratton. Bratton takes it wide, and the referee trying to get out of the way there. Got to come back to Boynoff. His shot was blocked. Boynoff coming off just a terrific playoff. He had as many goals. In the playoff run, six as he had in the 48-game regular season. He was Mr. Game-Winning Goal, too. I think he had four game yes, winners he did. in the playoffs as well, too. Dustin Brown took a big hit early in this game, and you know he's going to be a bit of a marked man. He's a tough, solid player, but Ballard got a real good piece of him there early on. Flashback to last year. Why are they looking for Dustin Brown? Because of this hit. When Jason Pominville came in to put a hit on Brown, Brown saw him coming, got the elbow up. There was a suspension there because, boy, he made contact with the head, and Pominville was out with a concussion for a while. So Minnesota players have not forgotten that. Now Boynoff able to keep it in, moves it along the boards. Pratton for Carter. Carter rolls it right in front, far side. Picked up by Mitchell again. Willie Mitchell has... First game, uh, he played a couple of the preseason, but his first significant game since Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final in June of 2012. Hurt his knee in the uh, offseason prior to last year. Had knee surgery. Actually, had to have a couple of procedures to get it right. As it, ahead now for Grantland. Grantland trying to get around Regeer, who plays him well. Minnesota is off to a good start here. They're spending uh, a lot of time in the L.A. zone. They do not want to get hemmed in by this big L.A. team that is big and is fast. Minnesota is not quite as fast as they are, and they certainly are not as big. Turn over here. Niederreiter with a chance at a save by Quick. Now Heatley sends it back to the line. Suter moves it back in deep. Coyle couldn't get to it. Now Jonas Brodine moved in for the right point. Couldn't make the play. It's cleared. And out of play. Well, tomorrow, Team USA will take on Team International for the coveted President's Cup. Don't miss 
a minute of the action. The President's Cup continues tomorrow at 11.30 Eastern on Golf Channel and continues Saturday morning at 8 Eastern on NBC. There's a good look at Willie Mitchell back in the lineup after 15 months away from hockey. Did not play a single game last year because of the two knee procedures. Very smart player. They're happy to have him back. It's funny, they brought in Robin Regeer last year to replace Mitchell, and now Mitchell comes back and replaces Skidari, yes. who went as a free agent to Pittsburgh. L.A. had also uh, picked up Jeff Schultz as insurance, not knowing about Mitchell, and he was sent down to the minors before the start of the season, as Mitchell is okay to go. Off now starts it back into the Minnesota zone and lays it along the boards in behind. Backstrom, and uh, this is waved down by the linesman as we go inside the glass. Presented by Capital One, here's Brian Engloff. Well, let's get back to Willie Mitchell again. It's nice to see him back in the lineup, especially for the Los Angeles Kings fans. He means so much to them. I mean, he played some tremendous hockey for them in the playoffs. And during the uh, warm-ups, Justin Williams gets his buddy back. Justin Williams and Willie Mitchell would always watch the opposing team. Williams standing there in front of the bench. Mitchell comes in and sits beside him afterwards. They talk about the opposing team all last year. Williams had to do it by himself, but not anymore. His buddy's back. And Mitchell very humble talking to us this morning about being able at his age to come back and play in the National Hockey League. He was very honest. He said, you never know with these knee injuries. My knee could balloon in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. You never know. So he's appreciative for every chance he has to play. Living every moment, every shift out there. Now Jake Munson plays it up the boards, and Jordan Nolan works it out to center right. Clifford from Frazier is the fourth line out here for the L.A. Kings, but the Wild get to it, and that is cleared over the glass. And is there going to be a penalty? I believe there will be. We will yes. get the call. When we come back, a disputed goal. It had to go to review, but it counted. Matt Cook has given the Wild a 1-0 lead. Well, as we mentioned, going to break, looked like there was going to be a delay of game call. Indeed, it will go against Zena Kanaka, Brian. Yeah, the puck looked like it flipped up. He wanted to use the glass, which is the idea to get this puck out of the zone, but he got right under it because it was on edge and two-minute delay of game. And the power play for the Kings presented by Craftsman, uh, L.A., Tied for the 10th uh, best power play in the league last season. Minnesota, interestingly enough, had the fewest power plays against them of any team in the league in the 48-game season. They were fairly disciplined. Now comes the Carter. Shot safe. Rebound. Chance stopped by Backstrom as well. Good stop there on Pratt. Right on the doorstep. Oh, a terrific puck movement there once they get the puck in the zone by Los Angeles. Now Munson across the line. Ships it ahead. Second effort of the puck. Now he's knocked down. Carter trying to get in there. Cook, a terrific penalty killer, tries to clear. Stole, top of the circle, shot, save, made through traffic. Again, Pratt was right there. Suter gets it off the stick of Munson, and the Kings court back into their own zone. Jared Stoll should have walked the puck in more because Cook had fallen down in the corner in a collision with Carter. I think Stoll didn't realize how much room they had. That was really a four on three. They could have had better penetration. Now Kopitar has to go off for a stick. Hooked up the board by the Wild, but Downey able to hold it in. Now the Wild get to it, and it's Stoner that sends it all the way down the ice. Right off with it. 35 seconds left in the Minnesota penalty. Kopitar hands it off far side. Downey to Boyna. Back to Downey, the one-timer. Score! Perfect shot by Drew Downey on the power play, and the Kings have tied the game at one. Well, the one-touch passing on this power play has been brilliant. The entries are excellent, very clean, puck under control. L.A. one-touching it around and moving it very quickly. When you're killing a penalty and you're a man short, you're reacting to the pass and you're getting to certain spots. But when the puck is being moved as quickly as L.A. is doing it, Minnesota can't readjust quickly enough. Drew Doughty on the outside there. It's a perfect pass from Voinov from the middle down low. Puts it right in the wheelhouse. You can see how much... Dowdy gets on that one, and the moving screen in front of Backstrom by his own player, Ballard, I don't think he ever really saw that. Great shot by Dowdy. And the puck out of play over by the uh, Wild bench. Drew Dowdy on the power play with his first of the season here on opening night. The LA Kings will be leaving right after the game and play their second game of the season 
up in Minnesota, or excuse me, up in Winnipeg against the Jets. A lot of times early in the season, it's the offense that doesn't look as good because players are just not quite sharp with the puck yet. But, boy, not so for L.A. right now. Getting themselves back in the game in a big situation here. They were down one nothing in that goal by Cook. And then getting on the power play and making Zen and Kanopka and the Wild pay by getting in the zone really well, attacked. You could see they had pushed Minnesota Wild back inside their zone. They had them on their heels the entire penalty kill, and Minnesota barely touched the puck. Dante Kopitar incidentally got the second assist on the Doughty goal along with Boynov. Wild won that draw, but the linemen want to do it again and indicating uh, put one second back on the clock. Boyle does a nice job on the faceoff in front. Healy with a chance and a save made by Quick. Now it trickles over the line, but the whistle had long gone. Minnesota really bearing down here, and it starts with the young Charlie Coyle, who has moved to center, number three. Really nice second effort there by Coyle, getting it through and into the corner. And then they moved it out in front so quickly that L.A. was a little bit slow in reacting. That was Niederreiter moving the puck out in front to Heatley. I'm talking to Charlie Coyle this morning, and he's playing his first game as a center. He's played quite a bit of center throughout his uh, developed year. And here he is strength and speed and he tests quick with a wrist shot there that goes off his glove and out to center right for Scandella has it. I heard the guys in the studio follow up on what we talked about on the pregame show about Coyle. He can live up to what he's shown so far in preseason. Well, he's a big guy, and, and uh, Mike Yo talked about the fact that he was a little worried putting him at center. Would he be quick enough? Would he have a big ice surface game? But he said he's picked up a step this year. He's in tremendous physical condition, and he said he's really happy that Coyle's made the move to center. Offside here at the Minnesota Blue Line. And watch Charlie Coyle come back through the neutral zone. There's number three in your screen. That's how the centerman's supposed to come back through the neutral zone. Come back there, make yourself available, and then uses that size and that speed, protects the puck really well. Great penetration, rips off a great shot. That's the kind of stuff they're going to need from Coyle this year. They have not hidden him in games in the preseason. He's played against every top player that Yo could get him against. And in the, in the practices, he's always up against uh, Koivu as well, too. So he's feeling what good players feel like in the middle of the ice. Yeah, when you asked uh, Mike Yo this morning, uh, the, the one key to this game, the first thing he said was neutral zone. We have to control it. And he's done a pretty good job here in the first period. Now Koivu gets it free for Parisi, sends it across Brodine up the right side. Bill back to Brody, joining the rush. He was leaned out, but he still controlled backhand shot in the blue paint. Pommaville digging for it. Now it's poked away to the boards, and Williams able to chop it off the glass and out to center ice. Minnesota showing good quickness, and they're hustling a lot. They're physical on the puck. Last year they were like that in the offensive zone as well, too. They just need better finish around the net. Uh, Granlund deflects it into the L.A. zone. Mitchell, though, there for the Kings. Quickly across for Green, out to center ice. Kanopka, Fontaine, slowing things down. And L.A. has to regroup back inside their own line. Green again, plays it ahead, deflected by Jordan Nolan, deep into the wild zone. Ballard, whoa, he is hit hard, and a penalty coming. Ballard having some words with the L.A. player, and here comes Kanopka over now. And he was going to grab a hold of Colin Frazier, but realized that Ballard was going to take care of business himself. So the initial penalty was coming against Frazier for the hit. And Ballard, the Modet Minnesota native, playing in his first game with the Wild after signing as a free agent from Vancouver this past July. Well, Ballard takes a look over his shoulder to see what's coming, and he kind of does a, a double hit there. He, he tried to pass the puck, and then he actually knocked it down himself, so it sets himself up from that hit from Fraser. He wasn't a happy man, so he took it out on Colin Fraser. Welcome back to St. Paul. Coach, first game of the season. Are you seeing jitters? What are you seeing from your team here that you like to see different? Well, you know, I thought we had a pretty good start. You know, a puck over the glass, unfortunate. They got that power play goal, but uh, we've had some good chances down in the offensive zone, some good execution, so we just got to get right back on it here. L.A. moved the puck very well in that power play. What do you have to do different on the penalty kill next time? Well, you know what? It, it, I think it starts in the neutral zone, making sure we're breaking up plays there and making some good pressure, early pressure, once they enter that puck into the zone. And, uh, 
We've got to do a little bit better job with our sticks in some of those lanes. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. It is a power play for the Minnesota Wild. Five minutes against Ballard, two and five against Frazier. was a shot here, deflected before it get in on quick. And now Richards comes up with it. And Richards will take his time as he skates it all the way into the Minnesota zone and now sends it in deep. Smart play by Richards. You don't automatically just shoot it down. Sometimes teams will just wait for you to do that. He wastes a lot of extra time there. If you're not going to come on the ball, hold on to it and skate with it. Now Suter. That was well read by the penalty killer, Trevor Lewis, knocked it away. And now Heatley chips it ahead for Parisi. This first power play unit, Brian, for the Minnesota Wild, a lot of veterans. If we see the second power play unit, big difference in age. Yeah, that's for sure. A lot of youngsters coming out. Yeah, these are the guys that are going to be out there most of the time, but there are a lot of young players on Minnesota we'll get a good taste for. We've seen Coyle do some of his offensive stuff. He'll be out in the next power play group, along with guys like Spurgeon. Now Pommetville hands it off. Boibu down low, Parisi. Parisi able to elevate the pass to Pommetville, but Pommetville couldn't shoot it. Now Poivu down low again. Parisi in front for Heatley. It's blocked. Poivu quickly sends a back shooter, tees it up. One timer, Pommetville, and quick just squeezing everything together. A really nice puck movement on this power play by Minnesota as well, too. A couple of different looks. Jason Pommetville was back on the point at one point, and then he moved over on the left side, and Poivu took his place. Jack Daniels' RoboCam shows you the formation changing for the Minnesota Wild. They move it down low, back up high again, and then they'll get it over to Pommonville. It'll be over on the right side of your screen. There it is up to the top. Nice fake there by Suter, and you see the extra room and time that Pommonville has to pull the trigger. He's terrific on the one-timer, and we mentioned the fact that he just signed a new five-year contract today. It was announced this morning at the morning skate, and the coach brought it up and said, uh, Jason Pommonville could probably buy you guys lunch uh, one of these days, guys, <laughs> soon, guys. All the players were tapping their stick on the ice after that one. Jonathan Quick making a few little adjustments there on the pads. But both power plays... Uh, L.A. obviously effective, scoring their goal, Drew Doughty on theirs, and Minnesota coming back with some good puck movement on theirs. So here are the youngsters, Coyle, Granlin, Niederreiter, Spurgeon, and Brodine. Wild control the draw. Now it comes to the high slot, back to Spurgeon. Granlin. Now Coyle back to the line. Burgett keys it up, lets it go, looking for a redirect. And Stoll able to chip it off the boards and back into the Minnesota zone. Spurgeon's the old veteran on the point in this group. He's 23. Yeah, Mike Yo was talking about that uh, the other day. But certainly a lot of skill and potential with this second power play unit. And Regeer gets there for the Kings. Tries to jam it up the boards. Comes free now for Dustin Brown with Niederreiter right on him. And Brown will backhand it all the way down into the Minnesota zone. And Justin Williams, who was serving the minor penalty, comes out. We're going to get a penalty here to Nino Niederreiter as well. I don't know if he flipped the stick at him or hooking call. So they just killed one off. L.A. Kings did, and now uh, Minnesota's have to go back on that penalty kill. Here he is reaching from behind there. A couple of swats with the stick, and the stick blade kind of got caught in there. And Dustin Brown's been around the block there, too. I think he was able to hold it close to his body there to, so he could, the referee could notice a little bit more. A craftsman power play coming up here for Los Angeles. Well, they have scored on their first power play, but this is broken up nicely by Coy, who sends it all the way back into the L.A. zone. Cook has the Minnesota goal at the 104 mark. Answered by Doughty at 740 on the power play. And a second power play opportunity here for Los Angeles. Odin moves it along. Brodziak down. He has Cook. And along with Suter. Suter cruising in for a shot. And that was whistled just high and wide. Not sure if Quick got a piece of that. Back the other way now. Richards. Richards looking for Carter. Waits. Tried to shoot. It was knocked away. Brodziak able to backhand it out of the zone. You're going to see defensemen join in the rush from every team in the National Hockey League, certainly every successful team, more and more. Coaches have talked about it this season. We've seen it in early games this year. I watched Detroit the other day in the game on our air, and their defense were up in the play all the time. That was Suter jumping up shorthanded with a great chance. 
Jam up in the corner, and the Wild come away with it. Koivu sends it down the ice. Less than a minute remaining in the Niederreiter minor penalty. Stops are six apiece. As it comes in wide, and Backstrom hard, tear him off those end boards. Now Tory Mitchell comes up with it, and he sends it all the way back into the LA zone. Well, that was a better challenge in the neutral zone, what Mike Yo was talking about. They got scored on last time in the power play by Los Angeles. Now they challenged Muzzin. They didn't challenge Muzzin before, making him pass in it earlier. Now Lewis gets to his own pass, sends it out to Muzzin, a shot to the net, and that's deflected to the near boards by Backstrom, and hammered by Suter all the way back down the ice. Now they've got the power play off balance for sure. Minnesota back in control there on this penalty kill, doing a strong job. The rider is up in the Minnesota penalty box, getting ready to come back out as Richards with a rip shot that's blocked. And it's sent all the way back the other way. And Nita Ryder steps out. That was a good adjustment there by, by uh, Richards. Richards came really late on the play, and he had lots of time to gain the zone. It wasn't a great shot idea, because he shot it right into the pads, and Minnesota turned it over. They got in the zone well. Richards should have done a better job of that. Now Parisi able to clear the zone. Carter tried to send it back in deep. Parisi blocks it, sends it ahead for Koibu. Now Parisi going to the front of the net. Koibu trying to find him. And just too many sticks and bodies in the way for that pass to get through. Boibu in the neutral zone. Read it. Find Parisi. Long range shot. Boy, that came up high quickly on Jonathan Quick. He had to fight that one off. Now Parisi battling. Stoner sends it in deep for Pominville. Pominville takes a look. Patient with it. Wheels it to the front. Mitchell with a stick there. Now Kanopka comes up with it. Kanopka with a shot. In front of it was deflected just wide by Parisi. And the crowd appreciating that last shift by the Middles of the Wild. And this is going to be icing. Minnesota coming with a good push after that penalty kill. Parisi in front of the net. I think it was Kanaka coming out of the corner. They're just wielding and firing to the front. See that what happened in the corner? Kanaka throws it. Good positioning there by Parisi. He's kind of half jumping it, half trying to get a stick on it. And Quick has to literally fight against Parise to try and get a piece of it. I think he did. Yes, he did. With that blocker in his hand, Quick just protecting. Didn't know where the puck was for a moment, but it was wide. Kanopka, one of the better face-off men in the league the last couple of years, wins that one. Well, they were third in the National Hockey League in face-offs last year in Minnesota, but they don't have Matt Cullen this year. He was pretty good in that department as well, too. So Coyle's going to have to take his share. Kanopka does a good job, too. Flex away from Kopitar. Big hit and another penalty coming. And it looks like it's going to be boarding against Clifford when we come back. Now Clifford is in the penalty box for boarding. He comes in on Jonas Brodie. Jonas Brodeen looks over his shoulder, knows that Clifford is coming, makes a nice backhand play to the open area, and then does get his hands up to protect himself. But of course, the National Hockey League and the players, for good reason, have really protected players in those situations. He was vulnerable. Clifford made a hit on him for sure, but at least Jonas Brodeen was smart enough and agile enough to get his hands up to protect himself, and it's still a boarding penalty. Second power play for the Minnesota Wild in this 1-1 game. Koibu for the Wild, stole for the Kings. Koibu wins it cleanly. Suter sends it in deep. Parisi with a little head fake on Green. Hands it off for a shot that quick knocked aside. And now it's chopped to the crease area. But the Kings were there and Willie Mitchell able to clear. It's four forwards on the power play for Minnesota. And Pominville is the defenseman, uh, acting as defenseman back there with Suter. He is very active. We saw him move in there. We saw him get a good scoring chance last time from the left side. He moves everywhere. Now Suter with a wrist shot that was blocked by Green. Parisi recovers, sends it back to the line. Pominville rolls it along the boards all the way around for Suter to collect it again. Knocked away by Kopitar, and he sends it back into the Minnesota zone. That's what makes Kopitar such a terrific two-way valuable player. Really smart sense there, and terrific stick. Suter wanted to jump by him along the boards. He stripped him of the puck and got it down. Now Brandlin for Coyle. 
That young second power play unit getting another opportunity here for Mike Yo. Niederreiter tried to send it to the front. Goal stick and quick got away. Scramble for the loose puck. Boyle sends it back to the line. Long range shot, knocked down in front. Don't think it ever got through to quick. And now Richards for LA able to backhand it safely for the Kings out to center right. No, there were about four players in front with gear made that save. Niederreiter closing in, bearing down, kind of whipped double shot. Now Dowdy takes him down. Dowdy lost his stick. The 18,000 officials here wanted a penalty. A pass in front. Quick down far! Brodeen on the power play of the Wild with a 2 to 1 lead. Terrific puck presence on the power play here for Minnesota. They were sharp on their last one, and this one right on top of things. The crowd here wanted a penalty for against Dowdy for a trip there on Niederreiter, but Niederreiter got right back up and is the one who came late on the play and had the presence of mind to get in between the LA Kings forwards on the boards and in front of the net. He catches Brodeen moving in from the point and Jonas Brodeen makes the perfect shot right up under the bar. So that young second power play unit, Brian, shows the guys how it's done. Exactly, and, and Dowdy didn't have the stick in his hand. That really hurt the L.A. Kings situation. Niederreiter was the one who got tripped up, but he just got right back into the play, and when Dowdy went towards the puck, he couldn't really do very much because he didn't have his stick anymore, and that allowed Niederreiter to get the job done. Here comes Dowdy on Niederreiter. Now watch Dowdy. See, he lets the stick go, and then Dowdy can't do anything. Now there's Niederreiter. Look at that nice little cute move. Spins around, keeps control, backhand pass right on the tape and right onto the bar. Good what? stuff by Niederreiter. Yeah, great pass. And Niederreiter was uh, picked up in the offseason in a deal that sent Count Clutterbuck to the Islanders. Now King gets it into the wild zone. Niederreiter getting the only assist now as L.A. putting some pressure on here. Stoll sent it for the Minnesota goal. Steered aside by Backstrom. Now Williams diagonal pass. Intercepted by Fontaine and he'll start it back. Gips it off the boards looking for Cook. Mitchell able to hold him off. Now Cook gets it back. Tries to wheel it in front. Lopatar intercepts. Starts it back for Los Angeles. Gips it deep into the wild zone with less than two minutes remaining in the first period. Now Brown hearing the boos whenever he touches the puck from some of the crowd here at XL Energy Center. Yeah, the fans here are very knowledgeable. They don't forget that hit on Pominville either. And Dowdy, who has the L.A. goal. Here for Kopitar, he will circle back. Now Kopitar ahead for Carter. Carter takes a deep on Suter. Looks back toward the line, instead goes to the corner for Kopitar. Diagonal pass across for Doughty. It was blocked. Parisi and Doughty battle. And the Wild win that battle, and Regeer is going to go back and get it for the Los Angeles Kings. That's a minute remaining in the first period. It's Carter now for Los Angeles. Pulls it away from Scandella. Sends it across for Pratt. And that play whistled down with an icing. Never be without hockey. Get free live NBC National Games on NHL Game Center Premium exclusively on Verizon. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center Premium now. There's a good look at Matt Fratton. Came over from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Right-hand shot play on the left wing. He played some right wing last year in Toronto. So he's done it before. And he'll do anything. I mean, he's getting the chance to get a line change here. But... Getting the chance to play with Carter and Richards on a pretty regular basis, yeah, I, I, I would want to do that too. Two of the top players offensively in the National Hockey League. He's a happy man. And settling into a very different environment. Fratton, I said, what's the difference between Toronto and L.A.? And he said, it's kind of small town. He meant L.A. It's kind of funny because they live in the beach area. He said, yeah, I know it's L.A., but it's just El Segundo and, you know, the beach area, Manhattan Beach. Toronto's a big city. I live downtown. Interesting concept for a guy coming from Toronto to L.A. 35 seconds remaining in the period now as Carter gets it off the board. Virgin held the line momentarily. Now it's cleared back out to center ice. And Niederreiter on the far side for Coyle. That's a feather to the head for Healy, taken back by Richards. 
And Mitchell now for Dowdy as the Kings look to come out of their own zone. Virgin picks up the loop puck. Heatley drops it back. Scandella angles it off the board. Turnover here by the Wild. Williams looking across. Sends it to the net. Back to the save. Two seconds remaining in the period. Williams back to the line. And time will run out before that shot gets through to Backstrom. And uh, Marco Scandella and Richards getting into it. Mike Richards was trying to get to the front of the net. I don't know if he could swipe with his stick at Scandella. Scandella's the one that blocked that shot from the point. It, it would have been close had that gone in. I'm not sure Backstrom could see it coming from the point. L.A. had worked the corners and along the boards well and did get it back to the point for the quick shot from Jake Muzzin. And then uh, there's the, what happened after the fact. Richards doesn't take anything from anybody, even though he's a little smaller than the Minnesota defenseman. Stay tuned for the Lexus Intermission Report. Liam, Mike, and Keith will talk about the new faces for the Minnesota Wild contributing here tonight. And Sidney Crosby picking up his first goal as Pittsburgh is hosting Yarmir Yager and the New Jersey Devils on their opening night. Each team with a power play goal. Minnesota with a 2-1 lead over Los Angeles. The Lexus Intermission Report right after this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Lexus and the pursuit of perfection. And by Frostbrew Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Back at XL Energy Center, getting ready for the start of the second period here on opening night. Minnesota Wild with a 2-1 lead over the Los Angeles Kings. And it's been uh, quite a day for Jason Pommenville, hasn't it, Brian? Yeah, it sure has, and he's looked like he wants to earn that new contract, a new five-year deal announced today. He was pushing nine minutes of ice time in that first period. Very effective, moved the puck around well, had a couple of really good shots towards the net. I think only one hit the net. But he really shows them a lot of looks on the power play. He's back on the right point sometimes. He slipped over and got his chance from the left face-off circle. He'll be that permanent right winger with Koivu and Parisi. Very good first period there for Jason Pominto. Six-time 20-goal scorer. Had a career-high 34 with Buffalo back in the 06-07 season. Suter played it ahead, tried to hit Parisi. It deflects. Into the bench out of play. Let's go inside the glass with Brian Engblom. Minnesota did a really good job in that first period. Early on when they tried to dump the puck in, the Los Angeles Kings have always been really good inside their own zone. This was an early dump in. Look at how L.A. handled it. Really good. Controlled the puck. Boom. Cleanly out of the zone. No problem. Then the next time, look at Minnesota. Right on top of the puck. Turn pucks over. And this one ended up in the back of the net with Cook coming out of the corner and having it go off his foot. Minnesota got better as the game went on on their forecheck and put more pressure on L.A. and it paid off. And Minnesota wins a draw, something they did very well in the first period when they won uh, nearly 65% of the face-offs. You mentioned, Brian, they were one of the better teams last year. And that says a lot about Charlie Coyle, for one thing, uh, the boys talked about him in the studio. We've talked about him quite a bit already. Young man moving to center. Only played wing last year. In fact, Coyle was playing right wing before Pominville arrived on the big line with Parisi and uh, Coyver. He's made that transition to center very well. I just about ate that one. That got yeah. deflected <laughs> over the bench. Uh, you're talking about Charlie Coyle, and I asked him uh, this morning about playing center, and he said, you know, I, I played a lot different phases of my career and I asked him about in the, in the Quebec Major Junior League where he went after a season and a half at Boston University he said I decided I wanted to play a more pro-like schedule that's the reason I left BU he said it was the toughest de decision I ever had to make but he said when I had that success in the queue as he called it he said I played mostly right wing but I took a lot of face off yeah, and he played he was rookie of the year in hockey east at BU and then he goes to the Quebec League and he's playoff MVP here is Coyle now looking to the front, chance it off the pad of Quick. Another chance to rebound opportunity for Dieter Ryder, and he could corral it. Right on cue, Charlie Coyle coming out from the net. Out to the line now for Spurgeon. Shot wide off the end boards intentionally there, but it didn't come out in front like Spurgeon was hoping for. And now Carter angles it off the stick of Scandella to center right. Kings get to it there. Here is Pratt. Pratt with a long range shot. Missed the net. Rebound. Jansen missing the net. There was Carter. He had some room. That's the savvy and experienced player. He was reading the up the, uh, the carom off the end board. I thought he had an empty net for a moment. The puck was rolling a little. Now Green being chased down by Heatley. 
And it's jammed by the Kings out to center ice. Stoner across for Ballard. Ballard, a little chip pass there for Granlin. Dale Granlin, who attended Finland's Olympic orientation camp this past summer, said he was absolutely honored to be asked to the orientation camp and would love to be part of Finland's Olympic team in Sochi, but he said it's not a focus right now. He's trying to help the Minnesota Wild. Now Brodziak tries to drag it out in front, chipped away, and Brown able to dump it back to center ice. Don't let him fool you though, Dave. He may not be thinking about it because he's executing out on the ice. The rest of the time, he's thinking about yeah. it all the time, believe me. They all want it. They all want to play in the Olympics for their country. Now Cook sends it back in deep. Of course, he has quite a mentor, speaking of Team Finland, with his own captain here in Minnesota, Mikko Koivu, who will be certainly part of that team. Put in a good word for him, maybe, huh? Yeah, exactly. Brown. For Dowdy, lays it ahead, and Frazier tried to deflect it into the wild zone, hit one of the linesmen, sent back the other way. And Dowdy will chase it down. Shooter for Brodeen, and behind the play, we got Clifford and Kanapka. They decide to go. They had a short conversation. Kanapka, three years in a row, led the National Hockey League in a number of fighting majors. Now, Clifford's helmet is off, but it's in the course of the fight, so in case you're wondering, no, there won't be a penalty there. That got knocked off by Zen and Kanaka. And it looked like Clifford was well aware as he was going down to the ice that he didn't have his helmet, and he kind of quickly kind of whipped his body in such a way that his head didn't make contact with the ice. Of course, so much discussion about fighting and concussions off of what happened the other night. I, I, Dave, I'm half wondering if part of this conversation as they come together is part of it is, yeah, do you want to go? And the other part is, are you going to take your helmet off or not? <laughs> because if you do, you get the extra two minutes. Yep, yep. There's that, you want to go, do you want to go? Clifford doesn't really seem to answer him at all. They do keep their helmets on. So they will not get the two minutes extra. Kanopka pulled Clifford's helmet off there. And Kanopka's comes off by the very end of it as well. Right there, he just kind of, maybe Kanapka helped him a little bit, tugged him uh, in such a way that he... That rule has come in because they're trying to protect them, these players as best they can. Even though the players like to take it off, kind of, it's the honor of the thing. Sometimes the league and the owners and the management have to protect these guys from themselves. They want them to keep their helmets on. Well, not as much of an issue with those two because neither one wears a shield, but... Again, after what happened in that uh, tussle between Cole Moore and George Peros, says this will be uh, an icing call here against Minnesota. Before all that happened between the two combatants, watch Jeff Carter read the carom off the end wall here. He was in all oh, alone. Wow. He had the empty net. Yeah, just not quite sharp, maybe early in the year, almost killed Mike Richardson behind the net as well, too. But he saw the carom come out, Backstrom was caught, as you could see. He didn't He didn't make the save on the short side off the end wall, and it was a gaping open net for Carter for a second. 26 goals in the uh, shortened season last year was fourth best in the National Hockey League. Follow that up with six more in the playoffs. Koibu now for Parisi. Holds up on the half wall, sends it back to the line. Brodeen, able to get it in deep. Now Dowdy, chips it ahead, hands it off. Williams for King, and White King will send it. Along the boards in behind Backstrom. Kopitar in on him. Now Koibu has it, and the Wilds will come out with it. Koibu sends it into the L.A. zone, and Jonathan Quick settles it down. Willie Mitchell back to get it. The stick of Richards and in wide of the Minnesota goal. Now Scandella tries to play it around. Finds its way to Nino Niederreiter. As an assist on one of the two Minnesota goals. Scandella. Now for Coyle. That was terrific efficiency by Minnesota coming out of the zone that time. Systematic tape to tape and out. Now Richards. Has to play it ahead. It's off a stick. Drops it back now for Mitchell. Lays it out to center ice. Coyle there for the Wild. Hands it back to Spurgeon. Just about five minutes gone by here in the second period. A two to one Minnesota lead. And a quick out to get that puck before it got to the area where he couldn't play it. 
Goal for Brown. Had the return pass, but again, there's Minnesota. Brian doing a great job in the neutral zone. They are. They're standing up. Their gap control is good. Mike Yoa talked about that. When we play well, our gap's good. Brodziak backhand shot will stop. Rebound opportunity. Grantland now Brodziak again. Angles it off the boards. Stoner sends it across. Ballard sends it far side. Gloved down by Brodziak. Wasn't sure where it was for a moment. Now Dustin Brown gets it back from Lewis. That's a nice little move there on Brodziak. Chips it off the board, but not out. There's an efficiency and a confidence level of Minnesota very evident as this game has gone on and certainly much better than Los Angeles in the second period. Now Boynoff for Los Angeles plays it ahead into the wild zone. Lewis is there, Stoner steps into him. Justin Fontaine able to clear it. LA gets it back under control. Austin plays it ahead, can't try to make a play with it. Sends it in wide of Backstrom, and that hits up on the netting and out of play. Saturday on the NHL Network, Red Wings square off with the Bruins at 7 Eastern. Tuesday here on NBCSN, the Lightning Battle, the Sabres in a divisional matchup. Coverage begins with NHL Live at 6.30 Eastern. Then in our Wednesday night rivalry matchup, a great one, the Blues and the Blackhawks. Coverage starts with NHL Live at 7 Eastern. Download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash Live Extra. Those St. Louis Chicago games are going to be blood and guts. Two terrific hockey teams. I've seen a lot of uh, publications that have picked one or the other to win the cup this yeah. year. Very talented team. Well-rounded, have all the basics, everything they need to win it all. Now Coyle turns, set it to the front of the net, blocked by the Kings. And Green angles it off the far boards. Jordan Nolan giving a shove before he could corral the puck. And Mitchell lays it ahead into the L.A. zone. Off the skate of Frazier. Now Nolan back the other way, sends it into the Minnesota zone, and that line will immediately head to the bench for a change. Yeah, you saw King playing with Nolan there and Fraser on that fourth line. Yeah. He wasn't out with Andre Kopitar, so here's the Richards line. I expect we'll see Brown back with Kopitar. As usual, Brown hasn't played much in the preseason because of injury. Now Regeer with it. Carter sends it across. Bratton plays it ahead into the Minnesota zone. He'll try to chase it down, gets around Brodeen. Now Richards with it. Shooter leaning on him. Uh, Richards for Carter. Good pressure here by this duo. And now Richards trying to get out from underneath Ryan Suter. And back come the Wild. And they've got some numbers if they hurry here. Pominville sends it across. Brodziak to the front. Redirected by Parisi. And set back by Brodziak. Handled by Quick. Parisi tried to jump that one and ended up hitting him in the leg pad and almost went in anyway. Now Bratton checked by Coyle. Coyle turns. Knocked away, and Doughty will lift it back through center ice. Keith Ballard back there for Minnesota. They're happy to have him. They think his mobility back there, and it's a real restart for Ballard after a couple of so-so years at best with Vancouver. Yeah. Never could find his game with the Canucks, could he, no, Brian? After a couple of terrific seasons with Florida prior to that, then he signed a big contract. I don't know if that had something to do with it, but he lost a lot of confidence. Mike Yo said, we just spent this training camp teaching him our system and rebuilding his confidence. They think Ballard can help him a lot. Peter Ryder for Heatley. Heatley off his stick. Picked up Ballard. Shot a left hand saved by Quick. Peter Ryder again. Hands it off now for Heatley. Heatley drops it for Spurgeon. Spurgeon closing in. He was trying a shot pass there. I think he was trying to hit the stick of Nieder right now. Bouncing puck. Quick, does he have it covered up? Yes, he does. But good pressure by the second line for the Wild, and they have a 2-1 to -one lead. Backstrom on the left, Quick on the right. Uh, two of the NHL goaltenders having to adjust to one of the most talked about changes, and that's the change in the uh, goalie pad, 10% reduction in the height above the knee, and with the average NHL goalie pad changing between two and two and a half inches, that means potentially an additional five inches in that five-hole area, and if the goalie squeezes the pads together, as you see, that creates a little bit more room on the outside of the goaltenders, and the bouncing puck is handled by Quick. Is it in behind? No, Parisi was digging for it in the blue paint. 
Uh, Brian, we've seen a lot of pucks going in very early in this NHL season. Don't know if it has anything to do with that reduction, but... Oh, I think so. It's got to have something to do with Jonathan Quick gets those shorter pads together very quickly on that one. It takes more work, obviously. When you take four or five inches difference away from a goaltender, these guys know their bodies so well. They know their equipment so well. That is a big adjustment for them. But Quick did a good job of closing that five hole up. It's not hurting them when it comes to protection at all. But, of course, the goaltenders aren't too happy about it. Another face-off win led to that shot to the net by the Wild, and now it's out to center right, Brodine. Who has the goal that's the difference in this game right now. Two to one lead for the middle of the Wild. And uh, icing called here. Let's go back to the studio and Liam McHugh. Dave, thanks so much. Time for a game break. Florida, Dallas. Why are we showing you this? Good question. Tim Thomas, he is in net. And Scott Gomez is finding the back of the net. That snapped a 22 game goal drought. One zip. Dave. All kinds of uh, careers being reborn <laughs> in South Florida. Yeah, good to see Tim Thomas back oh, in the great game. To and see they him start him in the, in the very first game of the year for Florida. Hey. Alan Frazier won that draw. Dowdy's shot was deflected well wide of the Minnesota net. Now they jam up along the boards. Frazier given a shove there by Koibu as it comes to Regeer. Dowdy. To the net, knocked down in front. Now Suter lines it across for Brodeen. What a terrific tandem that has quickly become. Everybody knew what Brian Suter was all about. Found out quickly about Jonas Brodeen. Brodeen's a very fast runner, very quick runner. He's one of the few tandems anymore in the NHL where both of them are left-handed. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about that this morning, Brian. Good point, because yes. most, co most coaches now are adamant. They want a lefty on the left side and a righty on the right side. But Brodeen and Suter are both left-handed. Certainly doesn't seem to bother Brodeen at all playing that right side. Only nine shots for Los Angeles as we've just passed the halfway mark of the second period. 19 for the Minnesota Wild as Muzzin. Back the other way, sends it in wide of the Wild goal. Pratt got a stick on it. Now Richards. Sends it across for Muzzin. Muzzin to the net and sticks him away. And Granlin chips it back down to center right. Muzzin took a big hit there from Matt Cook. Cook has had a couple of hits. And of course had the uh, goal that went to video review to start things off just over a minute in. Pass for Niederreiter is over the glass and out of play. 9.20 to go in the second. 2-1 wild. Welcome back to St. Paul. Coach, Minnesota's done a pretty good job as this game has gone on and getting in on the forecheck. What can you do better maybe to get out of your zone? Well, we got to handle the play through line to win faceoffs. That would be first and foremost. They're putting bucks in. They have possession. We're usually a good possession team. We have to get better at that. Do you see penalties being a problem in this game? It was early. I didn't, obviously, I didn't like the call in Clifford. Eh? That's, that's not a penalty. Uh, Fraser, Fraz, that is one for nine, but... Second one, the power play goal is scored, not a bounce. Thanks, Coach. Yep. All right, Daryl Sutter, not happy with the second of the two boarding calls, the one that was called by Clifford and led to the power play goal. And there's King back out there with the Kopitar line again. Now Heatley for Coyle, knocked away. And it's picked up by Williams, but to go to Daryl Sutter's point, Coyle was 10 and 4 in the faceoff circle as Kopitar tries to slide it in front. Heatley picks it up and slides it back now for Coyle. It's a deep into the LA zone. Quick. Not about playing it. Let it go for Regeer. Now Coyle and Niederreiter trying to force a turnover here. Comes back out of the stick of Kopitar. Mandela steps up and sends it right back into the LA zone. Lewis got a stick on it, but Scandella recovers. And it's out to center right. Boyd who lost his footing and fell down, and L.A. turns it back into the Minnesota zone. Justin Brown. And this line for L.A. trying to get something going. Along with Lewis and Stoll. Deflected puck comes out the point off. Sends it in wide. Stoll got a stick on it. Scandella staying on him. Now back for Dustin Brown. 
Thought about the wraparound when the puck came off his stick. Now Brown sends it out to the line. It comes back for Lewis, who let it go for Jared Stoll. Out to the line for Mitchell. Mitchell tried to get it deep. It was blocked, and Boyd moved back the other way. Pulled off for Parisi. Chris crossing with Commonville. Knocked away by Voinov. Voinov tried to slide it out of the zone. Hit the skate of Parisi. And the Wild regain possession. Now they're going to wait. And both teams are going to make changes here. Great authority to the game, the way Minnesota is playing it right now. Very impressed in this entire second period. They started in the late stages, really, of the first. Their puck movement, their confidence level, and the look of what they know, what they're doing in each area of the ice. Icing is called here against Los Angeles as we take a look at the storyline presented by DiGiorno. There was the Matt Cook play. And the NHL ruled that it was the speed of the puck, not the kicking motion. They didn't feel it was a kicking motion. And then after Dowdy scored on the power play for Los Angeles, it was Rodine that got the goal. That is the difference right now. Now Richards doing a good job against Brodziak, forcing his way right to the blue paint. And now it's Cook handing it off for Suter in the wild. Look to come back on the counterattack. Allen sends it deep. Green is there. And finishes the hit. A turnover by L.A. Brodzia backhand shot, quick steers it to the corner. That's the high man for Minnesota, doing a good job on the forecheck, waiting. Brodzia coming in, stealing a puck and very nearly scoring. Montaigne off the bench, gets a loose puck, sends it to the front. Knocked down and muffs it now, angles it off the board, plays it himself. And Pratt sends it off the far boards into the... Minnesota zone. Bratton leaning on Fontaine and now Stoner over to help out for the Wild. Around for Torrey Mitchell and he chops it back through center ice. For gear for Clifford and now Clifford sends it deep into the Minnesota zone. Stoner back to get it. He goes down. Penalty coming. It's going to go against Los Angeles and Minnesota We'll have a power play when we come back. This is Kyle Clifford in the penalty box for tripping. He was not a happy man. He was talking to Brad Watson, the referee, afterwards, and this is why. It's not he who tripped Stoner. That's Fraser, number 24, who came in. There's, there's Clifford coming in lately. He tries to put the brakes on and ends up going over the top. There's the conversation. He's going, hey, get the right guy. Brad Watson had made the call. It was a call either way. L.A. deserved a tripping call, but Clifford's going, hey, it wasn't me. No power play number three for the Minnesota Wild there. One for two with a man advantage. And here is Pomerville across for Suter. Right to find Heatley, jumped over his stick. Now Koivu for Parisi. Angles it off the boards for Suter. Suter tried to get it to the front off the stick of Trevor Lewis, and Green tried to chop at it. Didn't get much on it. Stoll will try to hammer it around. That was blocked. Willie Mitchell able to finally clear it for the Los Angeles King. We're still stuck on nine shots on goal. Now Suter to the front. Save. Rebound chance and quick. Stopping Parisi who had the terrific rebound opportunity. Really heads up play by the two big guys for the Minnesota Wilds. Suter with his head up knew Parisi was on the move going to the front of the net. He just wanted to get a shot in and give him a chance on a rebound. Parise, right side of your screen, there's the timing of the oh. shot. Quick makes the first play, can't control the rebound. It was deflected a little bit. That's why Quick had to fight off even the first shot. There's Parise reading it. Mac Green turns the wrong way. Parise gets a second chance. Now Brodeen hammers one, redirected in front just wide. I think Coyle got a stick on that. That or Dowdy with a foot. Spurgeon for Coyle, out to Brodeen for Grandlin. Grandlin patient with it. Second power play unit was the one that scored the go-ahead goal. Brodeen now back for Grandlin with a shot. Doesn't get all the way through. Puck up on the air, knocked down, sent in wide. And a hand pass ruled here against 
the Minnesota Wild. Good job again here on the power play by Minnesota, and they're moving it into tight spaces. The key here, the pass has to be on the tape all the time. They're putting it to, to Coil. Watch him move it up to the point. Coil number three will move up high. There are guys around him, but see, they still give it to him. But he one-touches it back to the point. It gives him another chance. L.A. has had to do everything they can to readjust to where the puck is. The tables have been turned by Minnesota, moving the puck around on their power play as well as L.A. was on theirs. Virgin for Niederreiter. Drops it back for Granlin. Out to the line. Good passes again in tight quarters. Now back out to the line. Virgin tried to go for Coyle. Long reach of Carter denied that. There, now there's an experienced guy. Jeff Carter is a power play guy and a penalty killer. He saw that play to Coyle that we just showed you a moment ago. He was already on the move and took it away. Peter Ryder. Now for Grant Lanny. That was stopped by Quick. Now Coyle out to the line. Brodeen. On the far side for Coyle. Tried to find Niederreiter. That was knocked away. And a bouncing puck picked up by Kopitar. Kopitar. All the way behind the Minnesota net. Hands it off. Point off of the drive. And that was blocked in front. He had some room on the forest far side. I don't think he got the shot that he wanted. And he went short side. Boynoff did. There was nothing there. Back the other way now for Parisi. One-on-one -on -one against Boynoff. Parisi with a shot. Save made by Quick. Cut him up high in that right shoulder area. Now Williams. Rather quiet tonight. For 14. We know is a terrific big game player. Not having Dustin Brown on that line with Williams and Kopitar, it does have a different feel definitely with King. It's not in top form compared to what we have seen it at its best, and I think that has taken Williams out of the game a little bit. Now we're here with it. There's three minutes remaining in the second period as Nolan across for Stoll. Corey Mitchell stepped into him. Ballard colliding there with King. Stoll plays it out to the line. Here is Doughty. Doughty looking for some shooting room, but it was knocked down in front. Dwight King sends it right back into the Minnesota zone. Ballard. Turnover there. Trevor Lewis was waiting for that. Hands it off now for Mitchell back at the left point. Cooter steps in front. And able to clear it ahead for Brodziak. Kyle Brodziak for Mitchell. Brodziak looks to the front, good positioning by Doughty, but Brodziak perseveres, trying to get it to the front, and Dwight King was there. He couldn't control it. Now Mitchell angles it along. Doughty stepped in front, battling with Brodziak. Brodziak trying to chip it to the front of the net. And good work by the Minnesota Wild in these one-on-one -on -one situations. That was a good battle by Brodziak. The first time around, Doughty took him out along the boards and slammed them down to the ice. Rodziak wasn't happy, and then he took advantage of Dowdy in that last little sequence. Now Green able to drop it off for Muzzin as the Kings coming out of their own zone, trailing on the road here, two to one. Now Richards right back on the attack for Los Angeles. Backhand pass was blocked. Now he sends it right in on Backstrom, who has it in the glove. Watch live out-of-market games with NHL Game Center Live. One subscription lets you watch on your computer, smartphone, tablet, and connected devices. Visit NHL.com slash GCL. Dustin Brown is out there with the big line right now. Now, Brown only played the last preseason game. He had hamstring injuries and knee injuries, so he missed most of training camp. There was a question in Daryl Sutter's mind whether he was going to be ready for game one. It wasn't a question in Brown's mind, but Brown is making an adjustment. He is wearing a knee brace. He doesn't like it at all. He's the type of guy who doesn't like a piece of tape on him yeah. if, he's, if he's injured, but he's fighting through that uh, great steel, too. And here he is with Kopitar and Williams, and Backstrom had to be sharp on that. Cut to the net as Commodore turns it back the other way. Regeer chops at it, but Parisi right on about Boydu gets the loose puck. Nico Boydu. Girouette hands it off for Pommonville. Wanted to go to the point, but could not. Now Regeer for the king. Chops it up the far side. Less than a minute remaining in this second period. 
Williams gets it free. Brown goes wide on the left side. Kopitar up the middle. Now Williams wanted to find Brown. Good stick there, though. The Wild foiled that out to the line, and Williams able to hold it in. Peter got in between Dustin Brown on that pass attempt. Will be now for Pominville, and Pominville will play it back into the L.A. zone. 20 what seconds is, remaining in the period. Boy, oh, Jay, does Pominville ever get popped by uh, Carter along the boards here, too? He paid a price. Now Richard cruising in for a shot, missed it on the short side. As the line held in, going off, that changed direction. In front of Backstrom, centering attempt off the stick of Carter. Five seconds left in the period, hammered to the front, missed the net. All the way out to Mitchell. Mitchell tries to get it back to the front of the net, and the horn sounds to end. The second period with the same score we had at the end of one as we remind you to stay tuned for the Discover Card intermission report. Liam, Mike, and Keith will talk about a comeback for the Washington Capitals on home ice and a fast start for the St. Louis Blues. It was 2-1 after one in favor of the Wild, 2-1 after two. Stay with us, the Discover Card intermission report with Liam, Mike, and Keith right after this. The NHL on NBCSN is brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless partner of the NHL. And by Honda, official vehicle of the National Hockey League. Getting ready to start the third period. It is a 2-1 lead. Minnesota Wild over the Los Angeles Kings. Let's go inside the glass. Here's Brian Inglom. The Minnesota Wild made a big splash last year, signing Parise and Ryan Suter. Did they get disappointed by either one? But especially this guy, no. He was a first-team All-Star last year. He was a finalist for the Nor Norris Trophy. And with all due respect to P.K. Subban, for me, Suter should have been the winner. He did absolutely everything for his team. He averaged 27 minutes a game, every regular season game, 31 and a half minutes average in the five games against Chicago in the playoffs. Offensively, defensively, no pressure it seemed. The big contract that he signed, Suter came through in spades, and he has again here tonight. With those big contracts, Brian, it always brings pressure, but you bet. Two guys that relish it, Parisi and Suter. As Brodziak now for the Wild, sends it on the far side, Granlin is there. Now Brodziak again. Good work by Richards to separate it from the puck, and now Carter drops it back. Now one of the storylines throughout this uh, early part of the season will be Olympic hopefuls for various countries, and of course Parisi was such a big part of Team USA in Vancouver winning the silver medal. Scored that uh, huge goal that tied the gold medal game and sent it into overtime before Sidney Crosby won it for Canada. You're going to see a lot of tremendous efforts, extra effort, I think, by a lot of players who think they have a chance to play, whether it's Canada, Russia, U.S., doesn't matter. A uh, tremendous number of players have a chance, and that chance to play for your country in the Olympics is so unique. It raises the level of every game right from the start of the season. Now Williams lays it along the boards into the Minnesota zone. There is Hansi Kopitar, who will look forward to representing his home country of Slovenia. Now Kopitar leaning on him as Spurgeon, who clears it off the near board, but Voinov holding it in, sends it back in deep for Brown. Justin Brown starting this third period on the line with Kopitar and Williams. Kopitar with a hit, and Voinov right back into the offensive zone. Williams. Pulls it back, now goes to the line, a drive here, tipped in front by Brown. Now Stoll gets to it. Out to the line, Muzzin. Boynoff with a shot in wide of the Minnesota net. And now backhanded down the ice. And this is going to be a nice and call here. On the last shift, Andre Kopitar on the forecheck, and Jared Spurgeon, who's about 5'9 and much smaller than Kopitar, does a nice job with body position. Spurgeon, being small, has to use body position all the time. He gets him in position. Kopitar, don't think, expected to be hit as hard as he did. Seemed to shake him up a little bit. He wasn't too happy with Spurgeon. But Spurgeon survives in the NHL and does well because he handles the puck well, but he also understands that he has to use angles and body position to do the job right. And a whistle here, a penalty off the faceoff in the Minnesota zone. And it's going to go against... Charlie Coyle. Look, I wonder Coyle. if he okay. played the puck with his hand. I, I didn't get a good look at that, to be honest with you. 
face-off violation. I'm guessing that yeah. playing the puck with his hand, you can't do this. Last year they clamped down the net. It's a scrum to play. Yeah, he falls down and uses his hand, moves the puck forward. Right away, Jared Stoll knows. Nice block there by Stoll, which caused Coyle to fall down, and then he reacted by sweeping. Sometimes your instincts just take over. Yeah, it cost him two minutes. Based on control, though, by Kanak in the wild, they send it down the ice, so perhaps just a little bit of inexperience. That, too, that's true. His instincts took over, and he forgot that that's a penalty. Just ahead by Muzzin, but the Kings couldn't make the clean entry into the wild zone and now it's deflected by Cook and swept by Ballard all the way back into the LA end. Third power play for Los Angeles. Their only goal came from Drew Doughty with a man advantage back at 740 of the first period. Now Kopitar across the line. High slot, good stick by Mitchell and Rodin able to send it down the ice. Hands it off for Fratton. Trying to drop it back to the point. It was blocked. Picked up by Fratton. Hands it off. Standing on it was Carter. And it's cleared by Mitchell all the way back down the ice. Nice little fake by Fratton coming out of the corner. He gave Carter a chance, but that, net, that one never got on net the way Carter wanted. 20 seconds remaining in the penalty to coil. Takes a hit, now Scandella hands it off for Koibu and he'll send it all the way back down the ice. That was well done by Scandella, playing hard along the wall and then coming out, takes some guts, but it was the right play. The opening was in front of his own net and he walked it out in front and they got it down. Now Lewis across the line with White King back for Lewis, hammers the puck along the board behind back from Opatar in traffic, gets it out to Doughty. Back for Kopitar. Kopitar looking to the front. Still has a coil out of the box. Shot was blocked and it's cleared by the Wild. Back into the LA zone. Will not go far enough for icing. And Dowdy picks it up with coil right on him. Scandella with a really good job one-on-one -on -one against Kopitar there. Good stick positioning and body positioning blocking that shot. Mike Yo talked about that after the first period when LA had scored a power play goal. With the icing, let's go back to the studio. Here's Liam. Guys, thanks so much. Time for a game break. First shootout of the season. Alexander Ovechkin, the reigning MVP. He finishes. He also had two goals during the game. Gary Hudler stoned by Michael Neuberg. And Washington wins. Wow. Down, I believe, 3-0 at one point in that game. Well, the Capitals are going to be fun to watch just based on what we've oh, seen in the yeah. first couple of games. Alexander Ovechkin off to a terrific start. I heard the boys in the studio talking about him. He was so good last year, he was an all-star at two wings. That's right. <laughs> Left and right wing. Now they're going to try this face off again. Opatar wins this one. He struggled. He was 3-9 and nine in the face-off circle after two periods. Now Lewis for King. Peter Ryder stepped up on him on the wild. Take it right back. Peter plays it ahead deep into the L.A. zone. Peter Ryder gets a stick on it. Now it's kicked at by Clifford. Heatley recovers in the high slot. Hands it off for Suter. Nolan for Clifford as the Kings back the other way. Al Clifford. Nolan behind the net, wrapped it out in front, loose in the blue paint, and the Wild able to pick it up. Niederreiter for Heatley. Across the line, Heatley back for Niederreiter. Going off on him. And Kanapka and Clifford left battle earlier in the evening. Now Mitchell comes in to get the loose puck. Back for Kanaka. Muzzin leans on him. Now off to the line, Ballard. Could not get it through the traffic to the front of the net. Pointoff has it now for Los Angeles. Five and a half gone by here from the third. It remains two to one in favor of the Minnesota Wild. Dave Strader along with our man inside the glass, Brian Engblom, and the rest of our NBCSN crew.
Opening night for both of these teams. Brian mentioned earlier the Wild in their history have never lost a home opener here at XL Energy Center. They've won their last 11. 11-0-1 overall in their history. Now deflected ahead by Fratton. He picks it up. Backhands it off the side of the net. Following up though, the Wild get to it. And it's dumped back out to the center ice. That was a smart play by Fratton. He didn't try to pass, and he threw it right into the crease area. It's a tough play for the goalies to handle to make the save. He knew he had Carter going to the front of the net. Now Parisi, late man coming as Scandella. Scandella to the front, almost reconnected there with Pominville. He just missed it reaching out with a stick. Now Poison sends it right back into the LA zone. Quick helps it along. Duncan Brown is there and drops it back. I've been impressed with Scandella and Spurgeon on defense for Minnesota. They played together a lot the last couple of years. They played together in Houston in the American League and at times when Scandella was here in Minnesota. They performed well. Brantley gets a deep green with Brodziak leaning into him. Now Brantley and reaching out to grab that loose putt was Jonathan Quick. It remains 2-1 to one, wild over the Kings. Minnesota coach Mike Yo talking with us uh, this morning. Brian said, you know, nobody would look at our team and accuse us of being overly fast or look at our lineup and say we're overly big, but we do have some speed and we do have some size throughout our lineup, and we have to kind of collectively play more that way. I think they've done a good job of that tonight. Absolutely. Minnesota's got six guys in their lineup under six feet tall. LA's got one. So the size differential goes heavily in favor of Los Angeles, but Minnesota's played good body position, they've played physical, and they've moved the puck better and better as the game has gone on. Now Kopitar trying to get this puck to the front, Dustin Brown gets a stick on it. Kings had eight shots in the first, three in the second, and only two so far here in the early going of the third period. Now Cook gets it back to the line. Long first shot here. Stoner knocked down in front of Quick, I believe. And Williams now gains control. Slides it across for Dustin Brown. Brown with a first shot that was blocked by Suter. Two of them that will be USA Olympic teammates battling here tonight. Suter has a knack for blocking those shots. He was backed in a long ways. He had to come across on, on uh, Dustin Brown. Brown had time and room and should have found a way to get that puck through. Suter just had that way of getting a leg or a stick in front of the shot. Now back to close it down. Stoner chips it along. Ballard works it out the far side, gets it to center right. Niederreiter picks it up there, chips it past Muzzin. That green back to get it now for Los Angeles. Pass up the middle, hit a stick. Now it's Coyle that takes it over. He takes a slap. Gonna be a penalty. Good work again by this second line, Brian. They force the turnover, they draw the penalty, and now Minnesota will go to their fourth power play. Yeah, that slash hurt Coyle. Coyle got slashed on that right hand. Green came around his net, and he kind of surprised Jared Stoll with the pass. It was the right play, but it was a turnover because Stoll couldn't handle it. So then Green, who had made the pass, you can see the chop right there, right on the forearm. Nice job there by Coyle to protect the puck, but he paid a big price with it. This is one of those times, uh, Brian, when coaches say, you know, it's not so much about statistics overall and power plays, it's when you score them. This is a key moment in this game, the way it's gone. As much as Minnesota's dominated long stretches of it, it's just a one-goal game. Can their power play get a little separation? Boibu wins the draw. He's been great in the face-off circle. Gets it back down from Suter. Boibu for Heatley. Out to Suter straight away. Boibu far side, hands it off down low, stopped by Quick. And then Regeer runs over the top of Jack Parisi at the side of the net. Good puck movement again by Minnesota, but Suter is the key up top. Two LA Kings players shift out to him. See the two King players up high? And then Suter waits just long enough to get it to Koivu. Koivu realizes there's two guys caught, so he wants to get it to the front of the net quickly. They got one more extra whack at it, but good reaction there and composure by Suter to start that play and get it to Koivu. Uh, Koivu and Kopitar, and again, Koivu wins the draw. Neatly for Suter. Long one-timer here by Coy, who missed the net high. Coy, who came into this game sitting on 398 career points. 
Now Williams battling. Ford back to make a pass save. with it. With the time remaining on this Minnesota power play opportunity. They have a one goal lead. Power play goal by Jonas Brodeen. The difference right now is he comes out to Suter straight away. He goes back for Parisi. Kind of spin away from Mitchell. Got a piece of him. Heatley sends it back to the line. Suter. Not cancel all the boards. Mitchell. Boyd and Parisi on him. Now Boynoff got in there. Goal in front of his own net, able to calmly play it off the boards and back into the Minnesota zone. Bombardville couldn't control that puck off the boards, and L.A. will send it back into the Minnesota zone. They have to retreat the Wild. No better than half a minute remaining on this man advantage. Boyle, a little self-pass off the board. Now angles it off the end boards. Need a rider for Brodeen. Brodeen had it knocked away by Carter. And Dowdy able to send it all the way back down the ice. Now Richards working against Spurgeon. Boyle trying to dig it out of there, and he does. He'll start it back. Dozen seconds remaining on the power play opportunity. Grantland across the line. Got Niederreiter with him. Niederreiter sends it around. Boyle lets it go. Spurgeon picks it up. Middle of the ice for Brodeen. Back for Spurgeon. Winds up. Didn't have a shooting lane. Green is out of the box. He's hustling to get back into the play. Now Grantland. And it deflects off a Minnesota stick and Carter skates it out to center right and puts it back into the wild zone. Donut for Bramlin. And Mitchell able to clear it back out to center right. Sent back in behind Quick. He'll settle it down. Comes in for Clifford, and now Clifford now just trying to chip it off the wall to get it out to center ice. And he runs into Corey Mitchell. Now Muzzin back on the counterattack. Cancel off for a cop that goes in wide of Backstrom. And Matt Cook starts it back the other way. Pass broken up by Kopitar. Now Nolan sends it back for Clifford. Kopitar double shifting here, and a shot is kicked out by Backstrom. Williams with it now. He'll send it back in deep. Clifford gets to it. Backstrom's been really good in this game. He's been really solid. He's, he has that presence back that Minnesota needs in goal. William trying to make a move on Ballard. And Ballard knocked it away. And now the Wild send it back into the L.A. zone. Mitchell for Green. That pass hits a stick at Scandella for Spurgeon. This is the defense tandem, Ryan. You were talking about moments yeah. for the Wild. It's been impressive all night. They've stayed up. Their gaps are really good. They both can skate. They've got mobility, so they've got confidence to stay close to the forwards of L.A. That shows you a confident young pair back there in Scandella and Spurgeon. Because of that, they can turn the puck over and move it out of their zone more quickly and efficiently. And Scandella with a nice move there to shake off the four-checker Justin Williams as it's cleared back out to center ice. Monson got a stick on it. Spurgeon follows up, goes to Justin Fontaine, and Fontaine will gain the red line, hands it off down to Mitchell. Corey Mitchell's shot, steered aside by Quick. 7.35 remaining here in the third period. Kings with the puck on the road, down by a goal. Kings have done a good job in this third period of not letting Minnesota get in and get to the scoring areas much on Quick. They haven't been much of a threat. Now Fontaine sweeps it in wide of the L.A. goal, and it's cleared right back out to center right. Richards in his own zone, pressured by Niederreiter, who knocks it free. It rolls toward Quick. He lost it. And Niederreiter nearly got it to the front on a wraparound move. Richards back the other way. Slides it through Coyle. Now uh, Richards waiting for some help off the bench. Late man is Regeer. His shot pass was blocked. Off the pad. Rebound. Score! The quick hands of Carter has tied the game at two. L.A. with a really good line change, and that had a lot to do with it as well, too. They got two fresh troops out there. Robin Regeer had the initial chance. You can see top of your screen, L.A. getting a wholesale line change. Some tired players out there for Minnesota. Minnesota, see how many guys are just cruising with their feet spread and not moving, not picking up and playing man-to-man -man down low. That ends up costing him at the last minute as Carter comes in and shovels it on the backside, on the backhand, rather, into a half-empty net. But Minnesota got backed in there. They had some tired bodies out there. 
didn't read the line change from L.A., didn't account for everybody, and 77 made him pay. 229th career goal for Jeff Carter. Now Williams slides it across. Stepping up with Ballard to knock it away. Now Kopitar for Mitchell. Mitchell again up the far side that Delta Brown couldn't get a stick on him, but the puck goes far enough so that LA can make the line change they were looking for. And Willie Mitchell, baptism under fire, Dave. Only uh, Ryan Suter had more ice time after two periods. Uh, here's Parisi with a shot that's blocked wide of Jonathan Quick. Hommonville sends it right back to number 11, Parisi. He wanted to go to Koivu. The King spoiled that. Now Munson and Koivu come together. And LA able to get to the puck and it's cleared back the other way. Back head to the front off the stick of Backstrom. Bratton and Richards get the assist on the goal by Carter. Good play by Spurgeon there. Spurgeon saw Green coming. He was going to get hit big. Spurgeon still knocked the puck deep in the zone so he could get off the ice on a line change and didn't get whacked hard by Green, who's much bigger. Plays the puck to the glove to keep the clock moving. Just over five minutes remaining in regulation of this 2-2 game. Suter and Fraser mixing it up in the neutral zone there, well away from the puck. Fraser trying to get a hit on Suter. Suter is one of those elusive defensemen. Part of the reason he can play so many minutes is you can't tag him with a big hit very often. A little Nick Lidstrom in him. Skates out of... Potential trouble there as Blake King was trying to line him up, and now Munson back for L.A. Now Lewis sends it across and skips over the stick of Fontaine. And now King sends it into the Minnesota zone. Only center ice, Mitchell. Off the back, and now Ballard hands it for the Wild. Long diagonal pass, hit a stick and bounces back into the L.A. zone. Dowdy back to get it. Angles it around on the far side. Pratt able to get to it. Nice keep it ball by Brodnick. Now it's knocked away by the Kings out to center right. Just over four minutes now remaining. In regulation time, and a centering pass was blocked by Quick. Now Cook to send it to the front, hit a stick, and Kopitar back the other way for Los Angeles. Try to chase it down against Scandella. Scandella, good body position, but it's taken away by Kopitar. Now back to the line, Mitchell tees one up. And it was blocked by Granlin out the high slot. He'll just skate it back into the L.A. zone. And Scan it, yes, Granlin's going to draw the penalty here on Mitchell. Well, the former Minnesota Wild, Willie Mitchell, looks like he's going to go to the box. It was a 2-1 game until this play here by Carter has padded it too. Willie Mitchell in the penalty box for interference. Michael Granlin comes down, puts the puck around one side of him, and then Mitchell takes him out. I thought this was a good hit. It was well executed. I didn't think there was a lot of time in between. I know they've kind of really clamped down on the defenseman, but you should be able to let a defenseman play one-on-one -on -one and play physically as well. I didn't think there was interference. Down low, a chance here. Quick stop to couple. A third opportunity for Heatley. Still no whistle. Now we get one with a pile of bodies. And look at the splits that Jonathan Quick is in. You see the shape these goaltenders are in? It's incredible. He spreads out literally as far as his body will allow him to do it. And you have to have leverage because you've got guys trying to jam the puck underneath you. There he is. He goes down. Now see there, right leg shoots out, left leg shoots out. My goodness, that hurts me just to look at it. Down to 327 remaining in regulation. And the... Crowd of 18,000 plus here at Excella Energy Center. Sensing the importance of this power play on their feet. And Koivu after another face-off win. Now Suter gets it back from Pommonville. Struggled it momentarily. Did it come outside yes. the line? Yes, it did. Yeah, the puck was rolling. It was just one of those passes where Suter 
couldn't quite handle it, and L.A. had done a good job. They would backed him literally right to the blue line. His feet were actually out over the blue line. When the puck flipped up, he couldn't handle it. Yeah, you could see him say to the lineman, did the whole puck come out? Are you sure? And Kleinman was right there. Greg Dvorsky making the call. See, the puck is rolling. Can't quite do it. It hops up. And oh, boy. Oh, that is oh, I think he had a good reason to yeah. ask about that again. Easy to see in slow motion. Yeah. Boy, move for Heatley. Heatley took a hit. The puck is set back into the Minnesota zone. That puck's got to go deep. Just a little sloppy there by Danny Heatley. He's got to dump that puck into the corner. Koibu would have been the first one into the corner, and he just soft pedaled it too much. Boy, move for Heatley. Green stepped up on him. Now Jared Stoll hammers it off the glass and all the way back down the ice. Good job by Green there. He held the line and put pressure on Heatley again, coming across threatening with that body check, caused the turnover. Amonville will hammer those pucks along the boards behind quick. Green sends it back behind Lynette. Heatley got a stick out and he's knocked down. Battling as he always does Parisi. Now it's picked up by Heatley. Back to the point and Pomaville couldn't get there along the boards to hold it in. Now Suter for Coyle. Hands it off for Granlin with some speed. Eater Rider knocked away and Richards pokes it back out with under two minutes remaining in regulation time and as you see 15 seconds left in the LA penalty as Coyle chips it in goes after it Regeer is there Dowdy had lost his stick but he very quickly gets it back now Eater Rider pushes it along for Granlin out to the line Virgin to the net hits a skate Mitchell is out of the box gets back into the play Eater Rider deflects the coil for a shot, and that was knocked down in front, and Quick was fighting to get through traffic. Now Bergen with a shot. That hit Mitchell out in the face-off circle. Granlin again. Good pressure here after the power play, and Quick has to stop Coyle. Wrapped around by Regeeran out the center ice. Two well, good chances there by Charlie Coyle. LA's got a hustle on this change. Here is Cook with it. He scored early. Can he contribute to a late goal as he tries to set up Brodziak? Now Torrey Mitchell gets to it. Mitchell looks across. Picked up and by Brodziak. Move puck. Quick is down. Cook couldn't get much out of it. Neither can Brodziak. That was Trevor Lewis who made the biggest save. Top of the top of the far circle is blocked by Lewis. He doesn't have a stick. Ballard able to hold it in. Bryson sends it across. Brodziak shot changes direction. It goes wide. 40 seconds remaining in regulation. And now it comes out to center ice. And Dwight King starts it back for Los Angeles, sends it in wide, and Backstrom. Ballard for Pommonville. Now poked away, and King has it again for Los Angeles. Pommonville slides it across. And Stoner now with less than 20 seconds remaining in regulation. Pommonville far side, it jumps over the stick of Parisi, and now Brown will just chip it back out to center ice. Suter with it, and time will run down, so Jeff Carter's goal ends up being the goal that will send this into overtime, but not before uh, the Wild had some great moments here late, Brian. Yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan Quick's going to buy Trevor Lewis a cold beverage for that save right there. Number 22 on his knees with no stick, came in, got on his knees, Jonathan Quick was down and out to the right side. Look at Lewis. That's terrific goaltending there. Quick would have had no chance on that. Trevor Lewis saved the game. So we will step away, and then we will come back for a little four-on-four -four overtime. We're tied at two. We are headed to overtime, presented by Fast Acting Advil. There's the man that scored the tying goal, and then it was the penalty kill of the L.A. Kings. It was actually after that last... Wild power play, Brian, that uh, the Wild put on quite a bit of pressure. Yeah, they sure did, and they kept it simple, too. They just got pucks from the corner to the front of the net, and on their power play, nothing fancy. There wasn't anything fancy open, so they just get it down to the corner and try some jam plays. Quick was tested a lot. Opatar sends it deep for Williams. Four skaters aside here. Five minutes up on the clock for overtime. 
Each team guaranteed a point in the standings. Now Suter. Runs it up the far side. Parisi knew he had to be strong. Deflects it out to center right. Down he got over there ahead of Koivu. Now Dowdy. Carries through center right. Had to chip it deep. Picked up by Carter. Fired wide. Carter gets to it. Dowdy's got to hustle back to get to his defense position. Lead pass here for Coyle. Coming in on Mitchell. Puts on the break. Centering pass. And Dowdy did get back. And made the play on Pommaville. And the net comes off behind. Jonathan Quick. That was really well done by Drew Dowdy. Dowdy was looking at the bench. After he made the rush, it looked like he wanted to change, but looked back again and realized he couldn't. Left side of your screen, getting back, look at it. He's looking at the man. He never looked at the puck. That's good old-fashioned play the stick hard at the net. Dowdy prevented Palmonville from putting it in to an empty net. That's how you play hard and play strong on a stick in front of your own net. Good jo job there by Dowdy. You don't always have to be playing the puck and clearing the puck. Too many times defenders, defensemen do that, and when it gets by them, the guy who puts it in the empty net has the whole thing, and he's all alone to do it. Doubt he didn't let that happen. Mike Yo has Coyle and Pommonville as the two forwards out here, along with Suter and Ballard. Sutter with Dustin Brown and Jared Stoll up front. Mitchell and Boynoff, the two defensemen. Here is Brown with it. Digs it back to Boynoff. On the boards, looking for Stoll, but Ballard had good position there. Suter slides it ahead. Picks up by Coyle. Over to the outside on Boynoff. Coyle protecting the puck. Holds it back now for Pommaville. Mitchell trying to slow him down. Pommaville nearly jumped back and got to that loose puck. That is Brodeen. One of the two Minnesota goals. Out here now with Brantlin. Heatley and Spurgeon. Brantlin battling there against Kopitar. Now Boynoff plays it around Muzzin trying to get to it. Spurgeon there as well. Muzzin makes a nice play on the wall. Chips it ahead now for Williams. Williams across the line. Gets the shot away. Hit a couple of bodies. Williams almost collected it. He wanted to get quickly around the net because he knew Baxter may have been a little bit out of position. I don't think Muzzin was yelling enough there. Muzzin was open. He was up on the play. Williams could have dropped it to him for a great scoring chance for Muzzin coming a little bit later on the play. Now green for Carter. Carter forced back by Koibu. Now Carter and Richard. Good stick there by Koibu. Back into the Minnesota zone of Ballard now. For the Wild, hands it off. Miko Koivu snaps it across. Suter has it. Goes to Parisi on the far side. Ballard follows up. That play is close to offside, but the linesman waved it good. But back the other way, Carter couldn't quite handle it cleanly. Now Carter puts on the brakes on Suter. Suter went down, but still able to make the play. Chip the puck along the boards. Now Trevor Lewis with it. Trying to come out of the corner. Centering pass. And that just skipped away from Dowdy. Redirect pass there from Pratton to Lewis. Out the way to the corner. Lewis still battling there, but the Wild get it back. Scandella chips it along for Niederreiter. Out here with Brodziak. Pass out of the reach of Brodziak. Boynoff sent it back to the line. It didn't come out. Now Mitchell finds Pratton. Slowed down by the stick of Niederreiter. Now Bratton again. Trying to make a play. Couldn't do it. And Brodziak back the other way. Chips it to the middle of the ice. Bratton is there with less than a minute remaining in the overtime. Boynoff takes it wide. Trying to cut in. Suter would have none of that. Boynoff now on the far side. Dustin Williams picks it up. Williams waits. Hangs on, still has it. Had to shovel a soft pass through, and it was blocked by Pommonville. Taken away by Kopitar. He starts it back with Williams. Justin Williams with a shot net. Reflected off something and hit up on the netting over the glass and out of play.
We talked about two of the best defensemen in the National Hockey League in the Open tonight before the game started, Drew Doughty and Ryan Suter, as a look at their numbers in this game. Right up there as far as ice time goes, not a surprise for either one of them. Their ability to read plays, handle pucks, power play, penalty killing, Suter has done that. Drew Doughty has not been up on the rush as much as he is sometimes in some games, although in this four-on-four, -four, he's chosen a few spots to do it. Yes, he has a goal in this game as well in the power play. Now Spurgeon hands it off for Scandella, slides it ahead for Koibu. Koibu pushes it deep into the L.A. zone. Final 18 seconds of overtime. Carter clears it up the wall and out to center right. Scandella has it there. Heatley turns. Starts it back the other way, keeping it away from Carter. Tries to wheel it toward the front. Dowdy was there for Los Angeles. And that's going to do it for the overtime. We are headed to a shootout here in St. Paul, Minnesota. But we will step away as we have a 2-2 game headed to the shootout right after this. Upcoming NHL game Saturday on the NHL Network, 7 Eastern, Red Wings and the Bruins. A divisional matchup now, Tuesday here on NBCSN. Brian and I will be in Buffalo for the Lightning and the Sabres coverage begins with NHL Live at 6.30 Eastern. Our Wednesday night rivalry matchup is a dandy. The Blues and the Blackhawks coverage starting at 7 Eastern with NHL Live. Download the app or watch live online at NBCSports.com slash live extra. Brian, uh, each of the goaltenders have given up two goals tonight. Let's take a look at the four goals that got us here. Yeah, two goals by forwards and two goals by defensemen. This is a well-played hockey game. Really good execution. Good puck movement as well. The first one, bit of a controversial goal on the forecheck. Brodziak throws it to the front off the foot of Matt Cook and yes, it counted. Looked like he moved his foot a little bit forward, but it counted on the power play. L.A. answers back on a goal by Drew Dowdy and then on power play goal as well. Jonas Brodine moving in from the point. That made it 2-1 again, Minnesota. And then Later on in the game, Carter coming in, his timing is perfect. He has shovels the backhand into the far side of the net. And we ended up 2-2. Good business-like game. There was some certainly some emotion, too. We had a couple of scraps. Good high tempo. Puck movement. Early on in the season, you don't always see that because the preseason is all about learning systems. Depends how many new guys you have on your team. You're playing a lot of young kids trying to find out who's going to make your team or not. The L.A. Kings come in with 16, 16 guys from their cup team two years ago, so they had some continuity. Well, stay tuned for NHL Overtime presented by Bud Light with Liam, Mike, and Keith as they'll talk about the Caps completing their comeback. And how about a shutout for Mark andre Fleury, a confident builder oh, for yeah. him with his uh, backup, Thomas Bocoon, out uh, for an extended period of time. Battling a blood clot as we take a look at the first shooter, Zach Parisi. Parisi, Koibu, Pavaville, the three shooters for Minnesota. It'll be Kopitar, Carter, and Richards. Minnesota was involved in six shootouts last year. They won four of them and lost two. And Parisi against Quick. First attempt of the shootout tonight. Here on opening night. Parisi lost it. Never made the move that he wanted to. We try to get Jonathan Quick to commit. Quick is as patient as anybody. Quick is very active with his stick, too. So you watch Quick come out there, and I think that took away a lot of the mustard from Parisi's shot. It looked like he tried to go five-hole, but couldn't do it cleanly because of the poke check and the stick position of Jonathan Quick. Go retire. See his numbers on his career, 38%. Against Backstrom. To the forehand, scores! Andre Kopitar makes it one nothing in the shootout for Los Angeles. Nice little fake there, just a little dip of the shoulder, try to freeze the goaltender for a second. You can see there's room, low stick side. He tries to get him to move, he gets him just to hesitate enough, and then really quick lightning hands to the forehand, he puts it right in off the post. Slovenia got the best of Finland there, now we see Finland against the U.S. with Koibu against Quick. Oh, and there's that active stick you talked about. What yes. perfect timing by Quick on the poke check. He's very aggressive goaltender, always has a very aggressive mindset, and he's a throwback to the 1960s. They go Johnny Bauer here with a little bit of the poke check. As Jonathan Quick fools Koivu coming back across the middle. Carter can end it. 
Will he shoot her deep? Goes to the backhand and he scores! Jeff Carter, who sent this game to overtime with the tying goal of the third, wins it in the shootout, and the Los Angeles Kings will win this one three to two. Both goals going to the stick side. Carter with just one good solid move. Frees the goalie. He's very confident on the backhand. Backstrom not quite quick enough to get right over there. He tries to get the blocker over, but Carter, just one efficient move. You see that work so well so many times. So the LA Kings win their opener on the road. First time in their history that the Minnesota Wild have lost an opening game at XL Energy Center. 3-2, the final score in just a moment. Brian Engblom will have an interview with one of the stars of tonight's game. But first, let's check in with Liam McHugh for NHL Overtime, presented by Bud Light. 